Greetings, friends. Hello again. Hello again. Welcome back, Rafa. Welcome back to stuff. 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 Not Christoph. I always say Christoph, but it's Christoph, right? I think my file was correct. So, uh, you missed our uh, show and tell class, Christoph. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On purpose, maybe. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> oh, not much. It's just everyone showed different th things about their life. Some people showed pictures. One guy even showed uh, something from his uh, Facebook page, just showing pictures of his family and stuff. And, uh, Wafa showed a uh, picture. She, uh, what are you doing, Ziggy? She showed a glass of uh, tea, which is something that she said is more important than water in her life. She drinks this tea. It has a ceremony for this tea every uh, every uh, every meal, like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. This frothy Mauritanian tea, which is kind of a green green tea. So, and then what else? Yeah, this people showed different things. Somebody told us about his mountain biking. He loves to mountain bike. So he showed a picture of him with a whole bunch of people doing a race up a mountain on these mountain bikes. Uh, he was telling us that story. And I showed uh, some things from my traveling. I showed this, um, this which is a, like a Mongolian flask. Actually, it looks... There's like Chinese letters on it, but maybe they used to use Chinese letters at one point. It looks like so, canteen. Yeah, it is, exactly. It's a canteen, and uh, it's a flask, exactly. So it's for water, uh, because they were nomads, and they, uh, they're they on their horses all the time. And then I also showed this uh, uh, fez hat, uh, which I got in Morocco. You know. uh, and I also had this. I, I didn't have a chance to show it, but this is something that's kind of special. This is from a very specific culture in Europe. Um, uh, maybe, I don't know if you've heard of it. Maybe you have. It's uh, the Sike people. Sike. Or Sike. Yeah, no idea. <laughs> no idea. Yeah, yeah they're not very... Not famous. Uh, they're what? Where they are they? They live in, uh, where do they live? They live in Transylvania. Transylvania. So um, uh, the forests and hills of northern Romania. And this specific people, uh, even though they live in Romania, they speak uh, Hungarian. They speak a dialect of Hungarian. And um, they have a different culture. And they are not very accepted in Romania. They're also not very accepted in Hungary. So they're kind of... Uh, displaced people, but um, the church I belong to has a sister church in this area of the world because some of these people uh, follow this Unitarian uh, religion, which is a it's like an early version of our our church, and so we have this uh, partnership between the two churches. So my choir came to Transylvania to meet these people and sing for them, and then uh, we stayed with a family. My, me and my mother were there, and we stayed with a family, and they gave me some souvenirs and stuff. So that's a, that specific thing is something that children use. Actually, I was trying to find something about this on the Internet, but I couldn't find anything on the Internet about what this is because I don't know what it's called. Um, I should have asked. I have some friends. Um, this is very s typical CK style, this uh, woodwork. They do this. Uh, style of woodwork all the time. It's homemade, and this is homemade. And when children, I think it's when children graduate, when they're done with school for the year, or if they're done with elementary school, they 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 march on the streets and they have this, they have they kind of do this kind of like parade of sorts. And they this is like a symbol that they've finished their school year or something like that. I don't remember exactly. But you can see that's hand handmade to homemade. So something part of the culture. I don't know much about it because it's not not a popular culture. And people in Romania don't even like them very much, which is strange. That's a flag. It's not a flag. It's uh 
It's a bag, actually. I could put my hand in it. So, it's strange. And maybe, so maybe they put something in there. Uh, maybe they collect something. I don't remember the story. And I don't know if they understood completely. So, anyway. But the, the, the trip itself, what it symbolizes is important because the trip was uh, really amazing. Uh, very interesting. A beautiful country, this uh, Transylvania. I have pictures, many, many pictures of that, too. So, enough of me blabbering. Welcome, Koro. Hello. How are you? Good, thank you. It's late here in Spain, but I am interested in the punk class. class uh, oh, really? You're punk. Ah, are you a punk rocker, Koro? I was you when were? I was young. Ah. <laughs> when I was young. Really? No, Koro was a punk rocker when she was young. <laughs> no, I was three months when I was young, like all the people. <laughs> <laughs> the punk summer. <laughs> the punk summer. <laughs> I have uh, I have my my helper here. Ziggy. Oh, oh. Yeah. I think he's bored. Who's the name? Ziggy. 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 Mm -hmm. She's a very sweet dog. Very patient, as you can see. She's waiting, waiting for me to be done. Uh, unfortunately, she doesn't know this, but unfortunately, when I'm done, I won't be able to play with her or anything. I'll give her some food, and I'm going to send her outside because I'm busy tonight. I have to go. I have a lot of things to do tonight, and I will be outside of the house. And I'm going to have a turkey dinner with my friends, and then I'm going to have a talk, a chat about some trip I'm going to take next year. <laughs> and then I have to do choir practice, and then lots of things happen. <laughs> Ziggy's going to be bored. All right, so... Uh, she knows uh, Lily? Oh, yeah, I don't know if they've met. Uh. met yeah. Let's see. <laughs> Oh, Lilia Sigi. But she, Sigi is very, very big? Yeah, she's pretty big. See how big she is in comparison? That's big. Whoa. Yes. Yes. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> now she's sitting. You can't have it. Anyway, I'm supposed to be teaching your class. So, uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Since Ziggy's always, Ziggy's been ignored all day, so I had to give her some attention. Anyway, uh, this high intermediate class, we're going to talk about the history of punk, so like the beginnings of punk rock music. We're going to talk about uh, personal pronouns. I know you hate personal pronouns, Ziggy. And um, that's about it. So um, let's start by asking you a music question. Uh, before I start, I'm going to talk to I'm going to introduce I'm going to say hello to uh, Hugo. Hugo. Hello. Hello, Hugo. I don't know how to pronounce your name because it's it's uh, Portuguese and I can't pronounce Portuguese. So if you're if you're um, uh, if you're trying to talk to us, Hugo, we can't hear you. So if you can turn on your microphone, there's a little um, mute button. There's a little microphone button that you might have to press so that we can talk to you and meet you. That would be awesome. Now we speak. Mm hmm. hmm? Now mute, uh, mute button is big. <laughs> yeah, it's a big mute. I'm <laughs> and then used to uh, small. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty easy to find now. Yeah. So um, anyway, so if you can get that to work, um, say hi to us or type something in the chat room so we can meet you. I don't think I, I don't think I've met you yet. No, yes, I have. 
because we're acquaintances on uh, Google. <laughs> so I must have, maybe I just uh, spent a long time. Oh, uh, yeah. So anyway, hope to talk to you soon. So my question to you is, who is the best singer in your family? Who is the best singer in your family? Um, Wafa? Um, my oldest brother. Your oldest brother. Mm -hmm. Why do you say that? Um, because he sang, he sang um, very old music, but it's very hard to sing. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, he sings like like but traditional like kind of a music. Maori, Maori, that have very um, long words. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm hmm. But yeah. he have a sweet voice. Uh huh. Oh, nice. Is he professional? No. Yeah. And he only sings yeah. when he's driving. I only sings when he's driving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. All right. Uh, cool. <clears throat> Krzysztof, who's the best singer in your family? <clears throat> um, I have no idea. <laughs> But, uh, no, singing. no singers, but uh, more musical. The most musical is my father. He play guitar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Over <laughs> part of family don't play any instrument. <laughs> ah, yeah. Some families are more musical than others. And some families have different talents and different things that they're good at. Does your father still play guitar today, or did he stop? No, yeah. guitar uh, is broken. <laughs> oh, no, a broken guitar, that's sad. Yeah, it's, oh. it's too old, <laughs> and uh, I don't know, dry too much, and uh, uh, I don't know what happened with, with this. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think you're ever too old to play music. But uh, sometimes you might grow you might grow out of it, which is sad if you stop liking music. But uh, but uh, no no, but the wood or because the wood is too, oh, oh, the, oh, oh, it dried oh, out. I, I got you. I got you. Something happened with this guitar. I don't know. Ah, uh, I understand. Not working. I mean, no. I thought you were talking about your grandpa was or your dad was too. No old. no no no. <laughs> <laughs> so the the guitar is too old. The wood is too old. It dried out. Yeah, something. Yeah. It's too old, this guitar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe it's not a very well-made guitar, because a uh, good quality guitar should last a lifetime, I think, um, if it's made well. But I don't, I'm not an expert on guitar making. So, uh, OK. Good. Karo, how about you? Um, I, I don't know nobody sings uh, right in my family. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody sings correctly. No, <laughs> really. My mom sings in a chor or choir. Choir. In the church, in, in a choir in the church. Mm -hmm. Yes, long. It was very, very well, but n nobody sings very well. <laughs> <laughs> really. Uh, what about you? I know I sing a lot, but I when I am alone at home. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so how does how can anyone know if you're good or not if you don't sing for anybody? Yes, I sing a lot. Now I am trying to sing Leonard Cohen alone. Alone. Oh, I, Leonard Cohen. I like. I love Leonard Cohen. Yeah, I taught a class on Leonard Cohen a couple months ago. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Kalingo class about Leonard. Mm -hmm. Cohen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Wafa might have been in that class. Mm -hmm. He's the guy. He's the Canadian guy mm. with the, the really low voice. Yes. 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 First we take Manhattan, then yes. we take Berlin. <laughs> yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Very beautiful singing voice she has. <laughs> <laughs> 
Then we take Berlin. But uh, it is a flamenco version of this song. Mm. Can you can you believe me? It's a version uh, song from it is first we take Manhattan, then we take Berlin. It's flamenco. <laughs> really? That's awesome. Yeah. You should find that and send it to I us. send you later in Facebook. I send you later. Oh uh, good. You should it's post very, it. very, very nice. Yeah, I I would like to hear that. Okay. Awesome. Yes. Cool, cool. Okay, so um uh, even though this is high intermediate our grammar skill is supposed to be personal pronouns, which is strange. Uh because personal pronouns is not really high intermediate. But I would say there was low intermediate or or high beginner. Anyway, um there are three categories of personal pronouns that I want to talk about today. Um, can you guess what some of them are? are um, some of these personal pronouns. And not and we're not talking about possessive pronouns. We're talking about the personal pronoun. So can anyone guess what the what the different pronouns are? Different categories. Like personal pronoun? Mm -hmm. Like um I'll tell you the category and maybe that'll and maybe you can remember which ones they are, but there's three. Uh, I'll tell you two. There's subject pronouns and there's object pronouns. We'll start with those two. So does anyone can anyone figure out the difference between a subject and object pronoun? Mm, it's what do you describe? <laughs> uh, I can do something to you. Mm -hmm. So I and is a subject and I do something to you is your uh, object. Right, exactly. It's that's a that's sentence it's grammar structure. It's subject, verb, object. That's the way English works. Yes. Maybe you is not uh, good because it's the same, <laughs> but <laughs> I can call him. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. That's also yeah. Those both correct, but this one may may be a better example yeah, because uh, <laughs> yeah, the object pronoun you is um, the same like subject. Right. So I can call him. Uh, it's a simple sentence. It's uh, subject, verb, object. Uh, subject, modal, <laughs> verb, object, and uh, so. I is the subject, of course, I, uh, and call him. What do you do? The thing that's being affected is the object. So, um, and uh, so that's usually, so usually the subject pronoun is in the beginning, in the, in the front of the sentence, and the first part. And a lot of times the object is in, uh, and almost always it's at the end. You can't really have... I don't think you can really have, you can't really start a sentence with an object pronoun, I think, in English. Not really. Not really. Sometimes I say, me neither, is a common thing. Ah, me neither. Uh, I don't like soup. Me neither. Uh, but that's more of an expression. It's not, I don't know if it's grammatically correct. Yeah, you can't really start it. You can't start a sentence with an object pronoun. Yeah. So, um, okay, so what are some more examples? So, him is the object pronoun. What if we changed him uh, to the beginning and we, we changed him to a subject program, pronoun? What would the word become? He. Right, so... Subject for him is he. Right, so he was called by Krishnaf. He was called... Mm -hmm. Right. So him is he. I, and then so, if, and uh, if uh, I was an object pronoun, if I was at the end, how would I, what would I turn into? Wufa? If you put uh, he called, what would I, how would I use the first person singular as an object? He called. Is it he called I? He called I? No. What do you no. say? He, can I say? Sure. 
he called me. Yes, he called me. Hi. So switching around, switching around, using the same same idea, but you're switching around. So I becomes yeah. me, right? Mm -hmm. So so yes, yeah, subject pronouns, and then what about plural? Uh, Wafa, can you construct a sentence using um, both kinds of pronouns in plural form? If you're talking about a group of people doing something to another group of people, any any uh, any sentence you want. They call them. Okay. Yes. Uh, so they called them, as you say. Yeah. Oops. Uh, how about what if it's uh, what if you are part of the group? They called. What if you are a member of that group? Us. What do you say? Okay. All right. Good. You can say they called us. They called them was also correct, but I just want to get a different, a different. Uh, so now we have second person singular. I mean, second person, third person, yeah, plural, <laughs> third person plural, first person. I I hate this. Uh, the name, the grammar. Of it. I'm really bad at this. Third person plural, uh, with uh subject, and first person plural object. They called us. Grammar is the best <laughs> because it's like math. It is like math. That's why I'm so bad at uh, explaining <laughs> math because I'm really bad at math. Uh, I have to do this. It's like a formula. It's a formula, right? That's what we said. Subject plus verb plus object. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a formula. It's, it, is, it functions like math. Yes, yeah, anyway. it's like math. Hmm? It's like mathematic. Yeah, mm. exactly. So we now we learned about subject pronouns. We know about object pronouns. Uh, there's a third one. Uh, reflexive pronoun. Mm -hmm. Christoph, you are good in grammar, huh? Yeah. He's great. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> uh -huh. He loves the grammar. So, um, uh, Koro, what uh, what's a reflexive pronoun? Um, for example. Myself. Yes. What are you doing? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm <laughs> trying to. I'm trying to. I'm looking at myself. <laughs> I uh, myself is a reflexive pronoun. <laughs> yes. Yes. Exactly. Myself is a reflexive pronoun. So, what can you can you make a sentence using myself? Use mirror. Mm. Use mirror. Use mirror. Hmm? Yeah. Mm. Stuff is, is suggesting you can use a mirror, like I was doing. You can. Ah no 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 no. Um, I am trying to lose the problem by myself. Okay. Trying to solve the problem. Solve. Solve. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Exactly. I'm trying to solve the problem myself or by myself. By myself. Uh, so I thought uh, about any... something like this. You can see yourself in your mirror. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, that also, <laughs> that also works. It's oh. reflective. <laughs> <laughs> mirror reflects, and then you can remember that reflexive is myself, yourself, themselves, ourselves. Right? Nani, myself. It was a, a song. <laughs> what is it? What song? I don't know. <laughs> myself. It it was a song, a disco song with myself. Chun chun chun. Nani, myself. <laughs> yeah. All right. See, she's singing for us now. Good. Good music. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Nani, myself. Let's talk about uh, <laughs> punk rock now. From disco, after disco comes punk. So that's uh, that's not. I should do a disco class. I haven't done a disco music. Class. No, it's not necessary. <laughs> like electric disco. <laughs> <laughs> nobody, nobody wants to take my a disco class. I'll be teaching it alone. I teach some different, uh, lots of different kinds of music classes. So I might have to do it. I'm gonna make a note of this right now. It's not obligatory. 
You don't have to come to my disco class. All right. <laughs> so uh, here we are. We have this history of punk rock. I'll share the link with you, too, if it's easier. And I'll read it, too. OK. The foundations of punk rock. The beginnings of punk rock are often furiously debated. This is partially because everyone has different definition of punk rock, and partially because its foundation stones are found in several different places. Punk rock was originally used to describe the garage musicians of the 1960s. Bands like the Sonics were starting up and playing out with no musical or vocal instruction and often limited skill. <clears throat> because they didn't know the rules of music, they were able to break the rules. There's some images here. Where we have... Oh, it doesn't show. Never mind. All right. Um, any questions about the first two paragraphs? Uh, about word definitions? No, I think no. This is partially because everyone is different. Boom, boom. No. Okay. The mid to late 60s saw the appearance of the Stooges and the MC5 in, in Detroit. They were raw, crude, and often political. Their concerts were, were often violent affairs, and they were opening the eyes of the music world. The Velvet Underground is the next piece in the puzzle. The Velvet Underground, managed by Andy Warhol, were producing music that often bordered on noise. They were expanding the definitions of music without even realizing it. By the way, a very famous singer just passed away a couple weeks ago uh, from, uh, from that. Lou Reed. Lou yeah. Reed? Lou Reed uh, just died a couple weeks ago. Yes, uh, two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I taught a class on Lou Reed the same day. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yes, that's right. Uh, oh, good. The final primary influence is found in the foundations of glam rock. <clears throat> Artists like David Bowie and the New York Dolls were dressing outrageously, living extravagantly, and producing loud, trashy rock and roll. Glam would end up splitting up its influence doling out portions to hard rock, hair metal, and punk rock. Ooh, that's a good verb. That's a really good verb. Doling out, phrasal verb. What does that mean? Not, I don't know. Not doling, but doling. D-O-L. To dole out, I don't know what it means. Uh, oh, wait, did I spell it right? Did I spell this? Uh, no, I don't know. I wonder if I spelled the door. Spending, for example. Uh, not exactly. Um, giving. Uh huh. Giving. Closer. Give to group of people. Uh huh. Yes. So I'm sorry, I spelled that wrong. The uh, it's dole. Like yeah, it's not D O L. That'd be dolling. Not to doll out, to dole out, excuse me. So yes, if you're distributing to a group of people, so like to dole out, um, like, all right, I have some, I have some guitar picks. Who wants guitar picks? You get a yes. guitar pick? Yes. You get a guitar pick? Mm-hmm. And you get a SD card? <laughs> so, I'm doling out, doling out, doling out, to dole out, to, yeah, dis what did you say, Christoph? Dispatch. <laughs> dispatch. Uh, dispatch, I usually think of as, uh, I, the first thing I think of as dispatch is when you have, like, vehicles, uh, I think about vehicles are dispatched to send off, to send something off on a trip. Um, to send somebody to do something, to send a, a like a vehicle or something, but to distribute 
would be uh, closer yeah, to distribute. Yeah, every mismatch. Distribute. Here, everyone, yeah, dole out some things. Okay, sorry. We'll go back to our article. But that's a good phrasal verb, very good phrasal verb. Uh, New York, the first punk rock scene. The very, uh, excuse me, the first concrete punk rock scene appeared in the mid-70s in New York. Bands like the Ramones, Wayne County, Johnny Thunders and the Heartbreakers, Blondie and the Talking Heads were playing regularly in the Bowery District, most notably at CBGB. The bands were unified by their location, camaraderie, and shared musical influences. They would all go on to develop their own styles, and many would shift away from punk rock. That's very true. These bands sounded very different by the year, in the 1980s. Except for the Ramones were always pretty punk. Um, I thought I had something to say. Oh, yeah. That's an interesting word. An interesting spelling and an interesting pronunciation. What did we pronounce it? Camaraderie. C A M A R A D E R I E. Very strange spelling and pronunciation. That's camaraderie. Spelled like uh, French style. Oh, English language. You're so silly. Uh, <clears throat> while the New York scene was reaching its heyday, punk was undergoing a separate creation story in London. Before we talk about London, what does heyday mean? Uh, the best play, uh, day of your life. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So the best. Like a peak of, of your uh, life, like <laughs> your glo glory of your life. <laughs> yeah, I like the, I like the word peak. That's a great word. The peak of a certain era. So if you're talking about jazz music, the heyday of jazz might be the nineteen. Uh, the 1920s when jazz was a, it was the jazz age or the heyday of film might be in the 1940s or the heyday of so the heyday of punk rock in New York was in the 1970s good meanwhile across the pond England's punk scene had political and economic roots the economy in the UK was in poor shape and unemployment rates were at an all time high England's youth were angry, rebellious, and out of work. They had strong opinions and a lot of free time. This is where the beginnings of punk fashion, as we know it, emerged. They, uh, and they centered uh, out of one shop. The shop was simply called Sex, and it was owned by Malcolm McLaren. Malcolm McLaren had recently returned to London from the U.S. where he had unsuccessfully tried to reinvent the New York dolls and to sell his clothing. He was determined to do it again, but this time looked to the youths who worked and hung out in his shop to be his next project. This project would become the Sex Pistols, and they would develop a large following very quickly. So the most, fam the most famous London punk band was actually an invention by one guy. <laughs> yes, it was Mac uh, Michael M McLaren. Mm -hmm. Right, this guy. Yeah. He lives mm, until now from this project. Mm -hmm. He's still mm -hmm. alive, is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He has profits, economic profits, mm -hmm. yeah, he's a business. today. He's a businessman. He's he yes, he's a uh, terrible businessman. Yeah. All right. Enter the Bromley contingent. Among the fans of the Sex Pistols was an outrageous bunch of young punks known as the Bromley contingent, uh, named after the neighborhood they all came from. They were at the first Sex Pistols shows and quickly realized they could do it themselves. Hey, what if we have a reflexive pronoun? <laughs> All right. Uh, within a year, <laughs> uh, this is a great, great article. Within a year, the Bromleys had formed a large portion of the London punk scene, including The Clash, The Slits, Susie and the Banshee, uh, Generation X, which was fronted by Billy Idol, and X-Ray Specs. 
the British punk scene was now in full swing. Ah, another great phrase. What does that mean, in full swing? What means in full swing? That's what I'm asking. <laughs> How can we define it? How can, what's another way to say this? I don't know. Mm -hmm. okay. Full of energy. Full of energy. Mm -hmm. It's similar to heyday, actually. It's the it's at the height of the it's at the peak. Maybe it's at the, my best would be completely. Uh, let's see here. The punk scene was now complete. Yeah, full swing is like everything's working together. It's like everything is happening. Uh, everything is happening the most, so it's like it's a lot like heyday. So the punk scene, so if the British punk scene was at its heyday, then it would be at in in full swing. It means everything's working, uh, and it's the the peak time. Again, you're going to use the the peak of a certain at the right time and the right uh, place. Yeah. The right time and the right place. That's or right. might be pending. Um. Pending, I think of something that's not happened yet. I think pending, I think of is going to happen. But this is like everything is definitely happening right now. Like, oh, Colingo, uh, we had some problems in the beginning when we were working on new Colingo, but now everything is in full swing. We're fully operational, and lots of great classes, lots of teachers and students. We're in full swing now. <laughs> okay, the punk rock explosion. By the late 70s, punk had finished its beginning and had emerged as a solid musical force. With its rise in popularity, punk began to split into numerous subgenres. New musicians embraced the DIY movement and began to create their own individual scenes with specific sounds. In order to better see the evolution of punk, check out all the subgenres that Spoon went into. Uh, and it's a list that's consistently evolving. It's still there's still new genres that come out of this punk rock, and it's only a matter of time before more categories appear. Before we click on this, what is DIY movement? I don't know. It's uh, hard to uh, use. Huh. Shop with tools. Uh, what about tools? A shop A with shop. tools. Um, you can do something by yourself. Exactly. That's a do it yourself. Exactly. That's a, <laughs> it's reflexive uh, DIY. Do it yourself is what it stands for. DIY. So. Um, so but you can store for uh, tools like uh, you can buy some uh, hardboard or plywood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can DIY store. Yeah, if you wanna. Yeah, so like Krzysztof just finished uh, uh, re remodeling his house. He didn't. He didn't ha hire a professional. He did it himself. He did. So it was a DIY project. Mm -hmm. it was like Krzysztof is helping Krzysztof. It was. A, DIY project. He didn't need help from many professionals. He did it himself. DIY. That's the that is the Polish way. He told me that's the Polish culture. The men that do a DIY style. They have to do everything. So, and DIY is a very punk rock thing. That's why. Let's see if I can look at some of these photos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's look. At, let's see if I can look at these photos now that I've made it bigger. Oh, okay. Whoops. Uh, kick out the jams. Oops. Some, uh, some album covers here. This is the band The Stooges from a long time ago, from the 1960s. This oh, first guy, he's famous, a famous singer, and he's still singing today. His name is anyone? No, I don't know. I don't know this and guy. Iggy Pop. This is Iggy Pop. That is Iggy Pop from the Stooges way back in the 1960s or something. Oi. Uh, here's now he's making publicity here in Spain for something. Oh. I don't know what. Oh, yeah, he's still very famous. 
and the New York Dolls. This was the project by what's his name, the uh, Malcolm Myron. Malcolm McLaren. Yeah, before he did Sex Pistols, this was his first. Project. Yes, it mm -hmm. was the project in New York, mm -hmm. and after this, he he comes to to London. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Good memory. Good history here. So let's look at some of these uh, categories, subgenres. A subgenre is what, like a branch off of. Yeah. We're not. We don't have time to read about all the of all of them, but uh, let's see what we have. There's uh, anarcho-punk. So like, uh, it's just like just like it looks, right? Christoph, what do you think this music is about? <laughs> Like anarcho. <laughs> yeah, anarcho punk. It was great. Oh, you like anarcho punk? Uh, yes, I was anarcho punk. Uh -huh. <laughs> from Sex Pistols. Yes. Well, yeah. So here we have. But can you uh, remember the the video from the Sex Pistols in the river from London, singing oh. "Good Save the Queen"? Yeah, God Save the Queen. Yeah. Yes. Yes, exactly, exactly. And here's a famous band from this. It's called Crass. Stations of the Crass was the name of this album. So mm. uh, it says here that it, it's not entirely about anarchy, but it's heavily politically motivated. Its lyrics often convey messages about political issues, inclu including animal rights and anti-government stances. There you go, Krzysztof. Maybe you should listen to this music. <laughs> Here's some other bands. Propagandi, Subhumans Against Me. I've never heard of Flux of Pink in me. Celtic punk. So it's 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 punk rock with Irish instruments. Like Flogging Molly is a popular one. Dropkick Murphys is another popular one. This one will be Celtic. Um we say in for some reason in in uh in, uh, in in American English, we we say Celtic. And then as far as the, the, the culture and the music of Ireland, we call it Celtic. The Pogues is another the big Pogues. The Pogues. Oh. Celtic. <laughs> I was in a concert from the Pogues. Ah, me too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but the singer can, uh, couldn't uh, sing because he was so drunk. Yes. That's it was uh, 92. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, in the same week in San Sebastian, the Basque Country, they sang the Pogues and UB40 oh my in God. the same concert. Wow. And I paid a lot of money to see the Pogues. <laughs> and suddenly uh, comes the Pogues and say as the singer say as fuck you other. They put <laughs> on the people a lot of beer and he couldn't uh, sing more. He was so drunk, the other had to sing. Oh my goodness. I yes. was totally frustrated. I have to see a uh, two hours from UV40 concert. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Yeah, they, uh, that's, they're famous for that. The, uh, the Irish like to drink, and the Pogues, the guys yes. from the Pogues, Always, uh, yeah, he's famous for drinking a lot. Yes. He drinks too much. Recently, uh, is diet the one of the singer of the Pogues, not the singer, one of the singers. That's right. That's true. Mm. That's true. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's cow punk, a strange marriage of country and punk. Cow punk, <laughs> like a cowboy. You know, think about a cowboy singing punk rock. <laughs> cow punk. <laughs> I cannot imagine. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's an offshoot, and this is another movement called psychobilly, which is psychedelic and hillbilly. So psychobilly, or um, uh, it's kind of like uh, rockabilly. It's like rockabilly music with uh, psychedelics. That's where rock and roll. Uh, Kyle Punk pays tribute to old country and honky tonk bands like uh, Hank Williams. Uh, so, Kyle Punk, like the old 97s, Uncle Tupelo, uh, and members of Uncle Tupelo ended up being in a famous band called Wilco. Wilco. Yeah, Sid and Nancy is the movie about the Sex Pistols. Yeah, yeah classic film, no? Yeah, I haven't seen Sid and Nancy, actually. No? 
No, no. It's yeah. not very good film, <laughs> but it's, it's the red, uh, interesting to know the the history of the punk in Britain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be interesting. Uh, the Eno relationship between the two. Uh -huh, yeah. uh, early emo, which emo has a lot of different possible uh, changes in the history, started in the 80s, but now there's still bands that call themselves emo. So emo is short for emotional hardcore. Um, bands like, so some of it is more melodic, um, and they, it's usually a little bit more progressive, different kind of structure. Bands like uh, Jawbreaker, Sam I Am, those are emo, emo punk. Gypsy punk or immigrant punk, uh, Gogol Bordello, Gollum. So these are like, like, it's like the Romani culture, like the gypsies. And it has gypsy right. music that sounds like Russian or Jewish uh, culture. Um, so that's, so imagine mixing punk rock with gypsy music. And you have this. Hardcore is just it's just how it sounds. Very very heavy, very hardcore, mm -hmm. screamy, not melodic, no melodies, just screaming. No, it's <laughs> Hardcore. <laughs> um, so um, pop punk, this is a very popular one. It sounds more very melodic. It's the opposite of hardcore. <laughs> it's very very it's pop music, yeah, but it's mm -hmm. but it's uh, mixed with punk. The most famous pop punk band you may have heard of is Green Day. Green Day. They came from this scene in the, in San Francisco area where they would do this very melodic punk rock. And they became a s international superstars. Now they're very famous now. No effects. Uh... Offspring also was very, very popular. Blink-182, mm -hmm. very poppy. They're very melodic. Psychobilly, I was telling you about this before. It's, it mixes rockabilly music, which is like early, early, early rock and roll, like early Elvis kind of style mixed with, uh, mixed with punk rock. Mm -hmm. They love Johnny Cash. They love Elvis. Oh, yeah. So... It's kind of like cowpunk. Riot Girl is uh, it's like feminist, uh, feminist punk, uh, gender equality. So mm -hmm. yeah, femi so a lot of women are doing the punk rock. Bikini Kill is the, probably the most famous. Yeah. Ska punk, which is uh, ska punk is. Uh, uh, ska is oh gosh I have to do a class on ska. Ska is a I, like a Jamaican style music. It's like upbeat like almost like reggae. So yes, you, I. So if you mix reggae with punk, it kind of sounds like ska. Reggae make me nervous. Makes you nervous. Yes. <laughs> Why is reggae? It's so reggae simple music? melody. Yes, it's ah. so simple melody. A rhythm. The rhythm is so simple. Boom, 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 boom. Well, sometimes it's very good, I think. Some reggae, I think, is very yes, good. Yes, to relax and... Uh, <laughs> um, uh, we learned a lot about different... I didn't... We didn't listen to any punk rock. I usually try to listen to some punk rock with... Uh, we do... We do, uh, like... Oi? Um, what is... But it'd be like, you know, punk rock right. it usually has elements. Uh, it's fast, it's aggressive, and can be melodic. I don't know any punk songs right now. I haven't practiced any, but I'll just play that with the... Yeah. Oh, Heart of Glass. Yeah, Blondie. Yeah. <laughs> That's more like disco punk. That's like disco punk, right? I heard uh, last week somebody in car. Yeah. Da 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 da
But anyway, yeah, punk rock is like, you know. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's, it's very loud and brash and aggressive. And you, you might, there's some yelling and things like that. So that's. that's what it is. Um, yeah. Anyway, I, I, we don't have time to listen to any. But um, I would, I mean, there's the Dead Kennedys was really big in the, in the United States. That would be a good example. Listen to some of that. Green Day, if you want to listen to something more, more, uh, more poppy, is Green Day is, if, you know, it's like a pop band, really. But they came out of that movie. So, uh, Christoph, did you ever listen to any punk rock? Are you talking about Blondie? <laughs> yeah, I heard. That's more new wave. Last week. <laughs> yeah, last week. That song came out about 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I heard somebody had in his car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, oh, what is this? <laughs> A funny picture. <laughs> yeah, punk rock. Huh? So, um, oh, uh, yeah, so when they're talking about bands like Blondie, when they started in the CBGB in New York, they started out as more like punk, but by the time they got to the 1980s, songs like Heart of Glass, that became a new genre of music, which was New Wave, which is another a, a break-off of punk rock. New Wave spawned bands like Devo, uh, The Talking Heads, uh, Blondie, um, even The Clash changed from punk to new wave later on. So, lots of lots of stuff. Oh, I'm hungry. I'm going to eat some turkey. <laughs> anyway, uh, any uh, any other questions or comments no. about this punk class? No. I will send you the, the, the song with flamenco from... Oh, Lily! Sorry, Lily is not to, to play with Lily, no. eh? <laughs> Sorry. You yeah. have to love Lily. <laughs> I love Lily. I love Lily, that's why I play with it. So uh yeah, send me send me uh, send I send you in Facebook the, the the song with flamenco from Leonard Cohen. Good. Good. Or post it on your on your wall so everyone can hear it. Or, yeah, but yeah, I uh, I send you a message in Okay. Good. Okay? Great. Great. Okay. Excellent. Thank you guys. Um, Thank you, teacher. Uh, you guys know your your personal pronouns very well, and <laughs> now we know all about punk rock. Okay. So, thank you, and have a great night. Good night. Good stuff, the queen. <laughs> God save the queen. <laughs> Good stuff, <Where> the queen. <laughs> bye, bye. Thanks. See you tomorrow. Yeah. See you. <laughs>